Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to walk you through the entire process of how I set up, captured, and edited this image. So let's get started. What's up guys? So before I get into the actual shooting, I just want to give you guys an idea of the uh, kind of equipment that I'm using and the setup that I have, so you guys have a better idea of what I'm working with here. So here I have a uh, Godox AD600B strobe light attached to a softbox. And I have this material here over top of it to diffuse the light. And this is mounted to uh, a stand that I have. Now I'm gonna take it off the stand as I position it in different places, cause I'm actually gonna hold it myself and I'm just gonna trigger the camera to uh, release the shutter and the light's gonna go off by itself. Let's go over here. I'm gonna position this camera here that I have uh, on a tripod inside of the car in the back seat. And this camera uh, has a uh, wireless uh, trigger attached to it. Uh, all you have to do is just basically make sure that it's on the same channel as your actual strobe light. In terms of the interior of the car, I just want to make sure that everything is tidy, everything is clean, you have all the vents in the right position, the steering wheel is in center aligned, and then depending on the final mood of the picture that I'm going to be uh, composing, I'm just going to adjust the actual ambient light of the car, uh, maybe to a different color. Uh, since I'm probably going to be superimposing a background uh, in front of the windshield, I'm thinking of some sort of a scenic, uh, scenic background with mountains. I'm thinking that maybe a blue or a green light much, might match this uh, setting better here. If you're also using uh, digital gauges, you want to make sure that you have them on the right setting, depending on the type of look you're going for. Uh, in fact, for example, uh, I prefer to have the sort of the speedometer and the tack on the each side and then I might have the navigation in the middle. And then I just want to make sure that even the actual vent settings are appropriately set as well. So it's just, it's going to create less work for me in post-production. That way I don't have to change it down the road. Uh, yeah, but just making sure everything is in its right place. I'm going to have the sunroof open as well. So in post-production I might have sky coming through here. Uh, but just those little details matter in the end. I want to show you guys how I have my camera set up on the tripod. As you can see, it's kind of in an awkward position. I had to adjust the legs. I was trying to get as wide of a shot as possible. Um, I also had to adjust the seat in the front, uh, put it all the way back and then down, as well as the other seat. And then adjust the steering wheel because when you shoot it from sort of this angle, I was I wanted to still capture all the gauges. So as you can see right here, it's kind of the angle that I'm going after. And the settings that I have it set at is um, F9, because that's sort of the sweet spot for this lens. The ISO as low as possible to 100, so there's a zero noise. And then I have the shutter set to five seconds. So that way um, it somewhat um, exposes the shot well enough for me uh, so I can still see all the uh, ambient lights uh, while the strobe will help it to highlight all the different features that I wanna highlight in the picture. Um, I also have the trigger set up, the shutter, so it doesn't go off right away. It gives me five seconds before it goes off and then it shoots. Uh, that way there's also less chance that the camera is going to have any shake so the picture comes out crystal clear. So now that I have my camera all set up, I'm just going to shut this light off here. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, press down on the shutter. And then the strobe is going to go off. Let's take a look at what we have. Okay, so what we want to do is essentially do the exact same thing, go all the way around the car, 
and get as many exposures as possible, highlighting different areas of the car. I'm actually gonna move it now here to the side just to get some highlights on the steering wheel. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing again. Okay, give me five seconds. And there. As you can see, cut some of the highlights on the steering wheel now. So we can preview the two different shots that we have now and compare them. As you can tell, in this shot, we're getting more on the highlights on the center armrest. And then in this one, On this one, it's more on the actual steering wheel. So again, it's basically the same procedure for all the way around the car. And what we're gonna do now is take all these pictures, bring them into Lightroom and start our post-production. So now that we're in Lightroom, let's go through all the photos that I decided to not use or use. Uh, I initially ended up with about 29, 30 photos. I went through every single one of these and looked at all the different elements of the photo and ended up choosing essentially just three photos out of these 30 that I'm going to use to build up the final picture. Um, as you can see, these are the final three. And I'm just going to tell you guys why I chose these. And of course, these are already edited, but I can quickly say how I did this as well. Um, if you go in here, um, I obviously just upped the shadows on this photo because they were a little bit too dark to bring out some of the details. I reduced the highlights all the way down because they were quite blown out at the top here. I upped the clarity about by 15 and the haze about five just to make the image uh, have a lot more contrast. And I upped the exposure of the photo as well. And then I fine tuned the white balance on the photo as well. I can actually show you guys what the initial one looked like when I imported it. And then after the edit. I also fine tuned just some of the colors. I thought the blues were a little bit overblown so I reduced the saturation and then reduced the luminance as well. So that was for this photo. And then as you can see in this photo, um, the actual gauges were quite blown out, so I decided to use one of the exposures that was very dark, where the gauges are still keeping their rich blacks. So this would be this would be used for the layer uh, that would be used for all the gauges, all the HVAC controls, and then this photo as well, uh, which I liked because if I just go into reference view, if I compare this one and this one, I liked the armrest in this one, it wasn't as blown out as the one in here. So in Photoshop, what I'm gonna do is essentially just mask this part out and use this part. I also like this door. It retained a little bit more blue. One thing I should mention is that you should also wanna make sure that your profile corrections are always enabled. Um, and in hindsight, I did miss a couple of things that I did have to correct in post-production, which I will show you guys later on. Um, if I just go back to my normal view, if you zoom in on this, as you can tell, both doors were open. So I'm going to have to correct that dash in Photoshop. And then I also forgot to close the door, the back door. Uh, in the rear view mirror here. So I'm gonna have to fix that as well. And I'll show you guys how I did that once we go to Photoshop. So once you're happy with your photos in Lightroom and you're happy with the selection, what you wanna do is select all the photos that you're gonna be bringing into Photoshop by holding down Shift and selecting, and then right-clicking on, the, on these, edit in, 
and open as layers in Photoshop. And what that's going to do is open all three photos in one file. So let's do that now. So now that we're in Photoshop, I just want to show you guys how I arrived at the final image. As you can see, this file here is the one that I used to build this final image. Therefore, it has all of these layers, but I turned them off to show you guys what I would see when I would first import the images from Lightroom. So what would happen is you would just see three different layers or depending on how many exposures you brought in. And the first thing I usually do, even if I'm using a tripod and even if the tripod doesn't move, there's always a chance that sometimes the image may not align properly. So what I usually do first thing is select all the exposures that I bring into Photoshop and I hit edit auto align layers. And what that's going to do is just make sure that all the images are perfectly aligned. So once you're finished aligning all your layers, the first thing you want to do is start masking in and out all the different elements of the different exposures you want to keep in the picture. So as you can see here, I have already have these masked out, but I can just disable the mask here as well as here. And as you can see, these are just stacked. So for this, exposure here, all I wanted to do is just keep these dials and then, then the screen here and some of the controls. So what I did is mask them in and mask everything else out. And how you do that is by creating a layer mask. If you double click on it, if you invert it, it masks the entire layer. To start bringing things back into that layer, you want to use the brush tool and the white color. And what that will do is start revealing anything you want to show through. And obviously I'm just doing a rough job. I just want to show you guys how that actually works. So let's revert that back to the original masks. So once you're happy with all your masks, what you want to do is select all three layers, duplicate them, and then merge them together as one layer. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and start cleaning up this image a little bit further. So as you can see, I'm just going to turn my merged layer on. I've already cleaned up a lot of the different unwanted elements that I did not want in the final image. So if I just toggle back and forth, I took out the engine light, which comes on when the door is open. If I just zoom in, I also eliminated the doors on the car by just using a clone stamp tool. Just zoom out a little further, see what else I did. I cleaned up a little bit of the, uh, the carpet down here, even though I'm going to reduce the levels on this so you can't barely see it anyways. I got rid of some of the reflections in the center console. Just got rid of a bit of some speckles down here in the seat. Just move it down here. Again, clean this up a little bit here. There is a bit of a smudge here, so I got rid of that as well. Cleaned up the mirror a little bit. And I'm going to show you guys how I replicated this reflection up here as well. Got rid of all these little stickers up here on the sun visors. Also got rid of some of these unwanted elements in the rear view mirror and took out the passenger airbag sign out as well. The next step was to essentially eliminate the entire background outside of the car, which includes the front windshield, the little window here, and the side window here as well. And I did that by using the pen tool and drawing all the way around here very carefully. I'm just going to delete that. So I saved it as a path slayer. And as you can see, the great thing about the pen tool is you can go back and adjust all the little anchor points. And then if you can see, it's drawn all the way around the window. 
Same with the one on the side here. So if you hold down command and click on the path layer, it gives you an actual selection. Once you have that path selected, you can either go back to the original merged image and just hit delete, which will automatically delete that part of the active selection on that layer, or you can mask it out, which is essentially what I did in here, hiding all of the parts that I don't wanna see. So let's now go ahead and just deactivate that uh, selection here by hitting Command D. And then let's shut off all the original layers so you can see that there's nothing behind the car now. So now that we have an empty space behind the car, uh, I went ahead and chose a background. And I decided to choose something like this because I felt it uh, suited the car and the scene, uh, the perspective, the composition, the colors. I really liked it, so I decided to go with it. Um, I made some minor adjustments to the hue and saturation just by desaturating it just a tiny little bit and adjusted the levels by bringing down the, uh, the blacks as well. And then I started making adjustments to the actual dashboard and the interior of the car. So the first thing that I did is masked in uh, some darker levels to certain parts of the car where I thought it would be dark in this situation. Next thing I did is uh, I actually decided to change the ambient lighting in the car from a blue, which I thought was going to be a good choice. But because of the image, it has a lot of purples and pinks in it. I decided to change the, the ambient lighting in the car from a blue to a more purple as well. And the way I did that is if I go in here, uh, I also desaturated the lights as well because I thought they were a little bit too bright and overblown. Uh, but I targeted the the blues and I shifted the hue by 20 and then desaturated as well. So you guys can see if I play around with this, it's kind of cool. You can switch the colors to anything you want. Let's just go back to the way it was. I also, what did I do here? Um, I adjusted the overall hue uh, saturation of the interior as well by desaturating by 5%. Uh, and then, as I said before, uh, I decided to dim down this part here of the car because I thought they were drawing too much attention. So again, I masked out the specific part that I wanted to see and then I reduced the levels by dragging this little lever here to the left. So I'll just go back to the way, way, way it was. And then last but not least, let's just deselect this. Um, I thought there was some yellowish kind of tones in the dashboard here that weren't really matching the overall scene. So again, what I decided to do is take that out by using a hue saturation adjustment layer and then targeting the yellows and then reducing those by 100%. So if I go back to normal, that's the way it looks and then desaturate by 100 and there you go. Next up, because I got rid of the original windshield, um, I wanted to, to put back in some uh, fake reflections into the windshield here to make it a little bit more realistic. As you can see, I put one right in here and then right up here and essentially what these are are cutouts of the dashboard itself onto a separate layer flipped and skewed with the opacity down to about 65 i chose 68 and then i chose a screen color mode the exact same thing for the one here i cut out this portion of the dashboard and the door flipped it, skewed it, turned down the, uh, actually I didn't turn out the opacity for this one, but I did change the color mode again to screen. If I go back to normal, as you can see it, and that's about it. Next up, I added a very, very subtle 
light flare in the background here, which I took out from some of my other photos, uh, just to add that little bit of more uh, depth. And then I added a reflection to the rear view mirror. And what I essentially did for that is I cut out part of the sky. I made it into the shape of the rear view mirror. Uh, and then maybe just faked uh, like a top of the seat back here. And then I just adjusted the levels to it so it's a lot dimmer because the sun's coming from the front and in the back it would be naturally darker. Um, one of the things that I kind of overlooked when I was shooting this initially is that if this car was out in the nature somewhere, uh, this navigation wouldn't really make sense because it was shot in a subdivision. So what I did for the navigation itself is I had to go back into my car and then point it to somewhere that has a lot of rough terrain and then shoot a separate picture of that. And I can go back into Lightroom here and show you guys what I mean by that. So essentially just took a picture of my navigation again, um, somewhere else. Uh, in this case, it's in Canada and British Columbia. And then I brought that image into the layers here and I superimposed it into the dashboard itself. Um, obviously I had to make some adjustments, uh, just some hue and saturation adjustments and some levels uh, just to make it fit with the rest of the dashboard. But essentially that's what I did for that one. Next up, I went ahead and had to fix the side view mirror here because I, as you can tell, the um, I left the door open while I was shooting in the car which is making more work for myself, which is essentially why I had to go back and fix this. Um, but if I turn on this layer, as you can see, I fixed it. And I did that by essentially just going back and shooting the car again. Uh, unfortunately, it was during the daytime. I can show you guys again. If I go back to Lightroom. So I shot the car again with the door open, but this time, unfortunately, I left the window open. So again, making more work for myself. Uh, it's okay, but we can go through this now. Um, but if I go step by step as to how I built this up, uh, let me just go back here. Um, so for example, um, for the background, all I essentially did is just cut out a piece of the background here, superimposed it into the mirror, obviously cut in the shape of the mirror and then put a slight Gaussian blur in there as well, just to make it a little bit more realistic. I used the levels adjustment to bring down the visibility of this because it, once again, it, it would be darker in the background. So that makes sense. And then superimpose the actual car of the second image that I shot again into the mirror used various different adjustments like hue and saturation, color balance to match with the scene. And then as you can see, that's the original levels because it was shot in the daytime. I just adjusted that by again, just bringing the slider to the left. Because there, the window was down, unfortunately, when I shot it, I had to add a bit of a reflection. So it looks like the window is closed. Again, just duplicating the background here and then superimposing it into here. And then adding a bit of a f glare here as well by just uh, drawing a, a sphere and then feathering it. Um, I mean, obviously if you zoom in really close, you can tell it's fake, but overall, if you look from far away, um, I think I did a pretty decent job of hiding that uh, hiding some of those mistakes. Next up, I wanted to bring back that reflection to the side window here that you guys remember that was showing up here. It was the blue line. And as you can see, this is what I did. Essentially what it is, it's just a line filled in with blue or purple, whatever I was trying to match to the color here. And it just has an outer glow effect on it with a blend mode of hard light. And then I did the exact same thing for this line here with that same um, outer glow effect. 
the only difference for this one is that I applied a slight Gaussian blur to it and I feathered it out so it looks like it's disappearing as it goes towards up the window. The final effect that I applied to this image to make it a little bit more realistic and dynamic is a slight light bleed that goes right into the cabin of the interior of the car here. And again, this is a pretty straightforward effect. If I just turn off this layer here again, I can show you guys how I did this. I essentially just took the original windshield path layer that I drew uh, over here, and then I duplicated that layer, and by double clicking on it, I added a outer glow to it. I set up my parameters around maybe like 65 opacity, I added some noise to it because the original background also had some noise and I feel like noise always gives it that more uh, realism as well. So I think it was like 10% noise. I clicked into the color and I color picked from the sky just to make it match a little bit better as well. And then in the end to top this entire image off, I decided to bring out some of the reds and purples that are in the sky into the rest of the cabin. And I did this by changing the overall color balance of the entire photo by going to the highlights here and then shifting it towards the red side. So here's before and after. So here's the final image. I hope you guys found this walkthrough informative and useful. Um, let me know how I did by leaving some comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like the content that you're watching. Uh, also check me out on Instagram. I have a lot more content on there as well. Hopefully I'll be doing more of these walkthroughs and tutorials uh, in the near future. Until then, see you guys later.